This week's podcast is sponsored by our friends at Yamaha. Level up your TV sound with the YAS209. Enhance your TV, movies and games with built-in Alexa voice control, DTS Virtual X 3D surround sound, a wireless subwoofer and Bluetooth streaming all in a simple, sleek setup. Visit YamahaMusicLondon.com for more details. That's YamahaMusicLondon.com Hello and welcome to the AV Forums podcast for Monday the 16th of March 2020. The world's still here and joining me is Steve Withers. Mother Nature is a serial killer. Mark Buttright. Ready? And Ed Selly. You can't make a dead person sick. And yes, what can we say? Really? <laughs> um, at least the podcast can take place because we're not all in the same room. So We are very much more than two metres apart. I'd, yes. Yeah, definitely. So we're okay. Yeah. And so as long as the internet stays up, we're all good. Yeah, and everybody's got at least ten... 10 bog rolls each so uh, yeah I do have exactly 10 bog rolls left so you were able at the end of yes, at last time's podcast my, to, to replen my village spa is fantastic he knew uh, how to make money because I went in on the Monday morning how much was he charging you for a bog roll 50 uh, quid <laughs> there was bog roll everywhere uh, it was stacked <laughs> everywhere 16 packs 8 packs 4 packs soft cushel whatever you wanted it was there so I uh, I stocked up. <laughs> Splendid. I have to be honest. The um, uh, if you are working in the supermarket at the moment, you have my undying respect. I mean, you That's must be thing. dealing with a level of idiocy that I I just can't even begin to comprehend. Uh, I mean, I have to say, I don't in Milton Keynes because of the density of supermarkets and because you know we've got good tra- tra- uh, transport links all the rest of it, it uh, other than the fact that pasta is now a thing of the past there is no pasta to be had in Milton Keynes um, can but, you explain the pasta uh, one is it just that it doesn't go off if it's dried pasta is it, that... it has a very long lifespan yeah. Yeah. I mean it, you know things have got bad when even the whole wheat pasta has gone um, you know because that's that's a tough eat um, uh, although, did you see that photo doing the rounds of that supermarket in France where all the frozen pizzas are being cleared out apart from the ones with pineapple on, which was still full? <laughs> no, but I, I did Fair see enough. a couple of photographs of the vegan section still being fully stocked with empty shelves all around it. Yeah, I mean, we haven't reached uh, the full apocalyptic percentages yet. But <laughs> nevertheless, Mil- uh, no, I, I'm really impressed uh, with the supermarkets in Milton Keynes. So, yeah, you know, thank you very much. Um, if Keen, if you work in the NHS, if you're a shift worker, if you're an arse or whatever, um, yeah, big respect to you guys. Um, can't be easy. Uh, it's going to get worse. Um, so, yeah, um, I know what it's like working in emergency services. I know how tough it can get and I know how long the days can get. So, um, if you're doing that, you have my utmost respect and uh, I hope it goes well for you at the moment if you're listening. You mm. never know who's listening. It goes well for all of us, to be perfectly honest. Well, yes. Um, yeah, well, we're, we're significantly younger than you, Steve, so we should be okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, not, yeah. you're not quite covered by the government's... Um, no, the, I'm, 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 I think I'll be all right. I, yeah, we, as far as I'm have, aware, I don't have any underlying health issues. We don't have <laughs> no. to brick you into your own house. Um, yeah. or at least not I, I, I think everybody on the podcast here, although I can't speak for Mark, but I think I can speak for three of us, that the, the likelihood of us getting it in a small space of time that we go out is significantly less than the vast majority of the population. I don't if know. I I am, it, we're all buggered because I, uh, I, yeah. I can go anywhere, even I in do, the best of times. I do have my son. He's a, he's sort of a vector for these things, so I I, I would suggest. Um, but no, you know, it is what it is. Uh could just get, keep on them um, you know i've got a reasonable you know as i say my plan now is that i'm going to shop as normal supply situations notwithstanding if i exhibit symptoms then i will follow instructions i will self-isolate and i've got food aplenty to do that assuming i still actually have an appetite uh, i have bought an emergency bottle of uh, of whiskey you know just in case <laughs> or on open wounds or something like that well no it's very hard Physical. to stockpile enough beer well, at least it's it's a it's a logistic challenge. So, in terms of just taking the edge off, there's there's two bottles of Jameson. You know yeah. that things will get really bad when people actually finally turn to that bottle of Advocar at the back of the cupboard. <laughs> yeah, or a bottle of Vicks Vapo Rub or something like that. I'll quick sniff of that. Although that said, um, my uh, record using friends are now particularly put out because obviously the price of rubbing alcohol has gone bananas because it's a constituent part of hand sanitizer. Uh, so they can't clean records. I mean, obviously in the great scheme of first world problems, that's 
quite at the pointy end but you know it is <laughs> that's still just another weird side effect so could you make your going. own hand sanitizer yes i've been thinking about this it's going on it's been, oh, sh- seriously there's a link no no he's involves rubbing and um i've got quite what? a lot of meths in the house uh, I don't so know. Does something you want to tell us, Mark? <laughs> there is a link. There was a link during the rounds uh, on on how to make your own hand sanitizer. I will post it in the th- comments thread tomorrow, today, however you want to be happy listening to this, and uh, and you can make your own mind up as to whether it's a practical proposition or not. Uh, we had, do have a coronavirus forum. It's uh, it's on health and fitness area. <laughs> yeah, I had a look at that this morning. That was an interesting <laughs> read. <laughs> Actually, some some really interesting reading to be had in there. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and check out the Coronavirus Forum. Um, Is it sponsored by anyone? <laughs> Not yet. Because <laughs> I can think of a very obvious sponsor at this point. <laughs> Travel agents. <you> know. <laughs> oh dear. Get yourself a case of Corona. Does anyone think that? I wonder if Corona beer sales have mass massively increased. I, in the no, past no, months. it's ha- no, it's having the opposite effect, especially in the US. Well, people uh, aren't drinking Corona beer. People are avoiding Corona beer for some strange <laughs> reason. Shame. Maybe it because... just reminds them of it, so they, you know, want to kind of try and block it out as much as possible. Well, it's it's a weird one. Although that said, unfortunately, if I have the choice of beers, Corona is not one that I'm going to make a beeline for. Actually, I quite enjoy a Corona. I like a Corona with a bit of lime in the top. Nice. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know why the lime goes in, don't you? It's not it tastes nicer. No. <laughs> No, no, no. The reason the lime is put in is because if you in when it's served in most places in Mexico, empty bottles have to be recycled. If you stick a piece of lime in it, it's got organic waste in, and you don't have to recycle it. Is that why they do it? Well, that's the that that was an answer given to me some time ago by a Mexican gentleman, and it strikes me as just cynically why would awful. You not enough. want to recycle the bottle? Don't they get money back for the no. bottles? And stuff? No, it's logistics that they have to carry out themselves at their own. You see, when I was a kid that had recycling done the right way, it was ten pence a bottle to take back the bottles to the to the shop, and we used to go and gather gather them all up and then take them at the shop to get your sweets. They reuse the bottles. Built milkmen delivered your bottles of milk. Reuse the bottles. Yeah, no, this isn't anything new. Can I tell you a story about that? When I was a kid, when I was a kid. I don't know. There was um, uh, Sainsbury's was selling a beer from Tasmania called James Boags, which had a five cent yeah, yeah, return that. on the bottle. So because we were an idiot, my my dad and I were just like wanting to see how, what would happen. We mailed them an empty bottle back, uh, and they posted us back five Australian cents, <laughs> which uh-huh. just. I thought it was quite charming because not neither side actually made anything out of that. But you know, it was, it was all good. How are you doing, Mark? Yeah, no, doing all right. Um, to be to be honest, I've largely not left the house anyway. <laughs> but it's it's uh, you know just getting on with gardening and decorating and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, no, just a bit gutted when the football went. But other than that, you know, first world problems. I will I'm, absolutely piss myself if they cancel. If they void, <laughs> if I have to say, if they void uh, the season, that would be one of the funniest things in the history. Of the universe. I will, I will not, die no. laughing. <laughs> My um, my solution to to how they solve this fixture blockage is that all the managers from Premier League <laughs> all the way through they have to play each other at in FIFA, ball? Tw- FIFA no, twenty. F- FIFA twenty. <laughs> I I want to see this principally because I want to watch Roy Hodgson operate a games console. Um, <laughs> And it could lead to some... I mean, can you imagine if Norwich staved off relegation purely because that bloke who looks like a pro wrestler turns out to be really good at FIFA 20? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it would just be magnificent. It would be one for one for the history books. I mean, obviously, alternatively, if I was feeling more egalitarian, which happens in like five minute instances and then passes, uh, we could essentially declare that I would be... I grudgingly concede that you you accepted places where they are now, but you didn't do possibly didn't do, relegation. Didn't do pro didn't pro promotion relegation. and relegation. Um, but then instead of allocating prize money as normal, given that a number of smaller clubs are staring down the brink of financial disaster because of this, why don't you just allocate it allocate prize money proportionally across the football league just to keep the lights on? Yeah, they're they're talking about things similar to that, which oh, well, is yeah, to, about to expand the Premier teams. League, and they they have yeah, no one gets relegated. Two teams come up from the championship and then next year. They yeah. drop down so, four teams because the, the the problem they're facing right now is the fact that you 
how do you start a season if you don't know whether it's going to end? You know, I you could end up with two half seasons and people saying, well, you could have just got at least one done in the space of that, you know, kind of yeah. year, 18 months or whatever it'll be. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's kind of one of those odd things like where you think, well, yeah, there are more important things in life. However, it, it's such a huge industry. And just to kind of suddenly say, actually, none of it mattered. They're talking about uh, you know the FA and, and, and the Premier League are saying, well, no, you know, we will find a way and everything. It's not due to some kind of high minded principle of what no. the fair thing would be. It's because there was nothing written into contracts about this kind of, you know, basically act of God. And so therefore everyone, you know, all the big broadcasters who've, who've spent billions for this all <laughs> paid it on the idea that you would get a full season. And so it's, you know, even behind closed doors, the idea is, well, we've, we'd have something to broadcast because otherwise you haven't fulfilled your commitment and it, you know, they could ask for their money back. It's just, yeah, massive, massive kind of house of cards ready to come down. Yeah, oh I'm God, just... did you see that wrestling match? The, the pro pro wrestling being done in an empty stadium. It's oh. the most surreal thing going. It actually turns it from sort of, you know, campy drama into something which is basically like a Samuel Beckett play. <laughs> it's um, really, really peculiar. The, the really... Waiting for the rock. <laughs> <laughs> but the re- yeah, the really kind of sad thing about this is, is that you slowly scrabble around for more sports coverage and, and, you know, all right, I've gone through football, through rugby and that kind of thing. And then you end up like you're watching the pool or something or then. But when you get down to like British wrestling, there's, <laughs> some, there's something. Is it still just... British wrestling? Does it still exist? Yeah. Well, they're trying to kind of. You know, they get most try... televised coverage these days. <laughs> no, they're trying well, to kind of now. kickstart this idea of, you know, doing the same kind of pantomime thing as in the States. But it's just. British people don't sell it well. There's always, <laughs> yeah, there's an air of pity in the crowd, I think. Yeah, I, I'm just so glad I got my Sky for half price because I'd be really annoyed if I was paying Sky price Sports is a f-ing wasteland at the moment. Let's be clear. It was a waste of money, but now it's a really obvious waste. Well, of I put, I put uh, Sky Sports news on this morning, and it was just an it was an info <laughs> it was an info screen running through how to protect yourself through for coronavirus yeah, but, but there was no news at Did least they've got sport. old stuff that they can they can yeah. do talk sport I there mean, wasn't Stuart Pearce playing punk records at one point <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making that up he was genuinely playing punk I mean <laughs> as, as activities go I'm all for it I, but, I, uh, I would listen if they had Roy Hodgson's rhythm and blues explosion <laughs> <laughs> There's my line for the uh, yeah for yeah, the mental note. <laughs> um, has anybody been doing any work this week? Yes, I'm. Wor- I've got your. Oh, yeah. your ironically, I've had stuff too. sent for you guys. Um, can I be clear on this? AV forums is my great white hope to actually keep my fucking mortgage paid. So um, yeah, I've got your stuff, most of it anyway. Um, and uh, we, we, you know, we will be discussing uh, further exciting means of ensuring that you home workers have got things to read. Um, and yeah, it's it's everything else. I'm supposed to do offsite stuff in the coming weeks and that's mm-hmm. oh, that's not so looking so good at the moment and I have every suspicion that my car is going to be impounded somewhere um, <laughs> you know I'll still be asked to pay at least, for it. At least it'll be in the UK. Yeah, it'll be in the UK. It is in the UK. This is very true. Yes, it has a chassis now. Worst case, you can go and walk to it. Well, no, it's in Yorkshire. Well, give them something to do, won't it? (laughs) Walk up to Yorkshire, collect your car. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Uh, possibly. Um, Incidentally, in terms of just just uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, he lives in um, in Scotland, uh, north heading towards Fort William Way uh, he um, they've had problems with fuel supply up there which took me by surprise so um, he uh, had to deal with um, uh, get, going to work for a couple of days last week driving um, his rather elderly Porsche 911 which has a uh, full size race fuel tank in the front of it it's got no front boot because it has got a sort of 85 litre competition fuel tank but it was the only thing he had that still had fuel in it that could turn on and move which is I suppose an interesting solution to I mean that this is how Mad Max starts isn't it the reason why all the cars in Mad Max are wildly impractical is it's never your first car that's still able to move at the end of these things is it so yeah. it makes you wonder about other kind of futuristic thrillers I mean if it is this kind of how they discovered the three seashells in Demolition Man? <laughs> the toilet roll shortage. 
I mean, as I say, my I, I don't know if any uh, my um, hypothesis possible hypothesis to where this toilet roll issue is coming from. I inventoried what I have in the house, so I know what there is, <laughs> and um, I had uh, I've got thirteen microwave curries in my freezer which have been accrued over time but four or five of them i can't remember, are morrison's fowls which until that iceland one came along which mark and i have eaten in the past they were the hottest microwave curries you could buy in the uk and i suspect that if everyone else has accrued the same sort of thing you are going to want to have plenty of toilet roll to hand I'm just wondering if that's possibly where, where, where this I've issue got has come from. A couple of those Frey Bento steak and kidney pies in a tin. I'm quite interested to see how they turn out. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Talking about yeah. going back to the 70s. Not, I, 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 honestly, there was a layer of dust on them about an inch thick. But they've been up there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't checked the sell by date, but I think they last a while. So I think they'll last know. forever. I think yeah. 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 I yeah, think they were created for uh, <laughs> they were created for the atomic wars, weren't they? So, yeah. uh, what have I been doing this week? Not a lot. Uh, packing. I've, I've, I've packed a C nine because LG wanted it back. I was about to say, where are you going? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I've had to pack the TV. They've asked for it back now. So the long term is going. So uh, I've got a Philips seven five four, which um, a couple of weeks ago was the cheapest OLED TV on the market but go, looking at the way the market's probably going to go it might end up being one of the most expensive because um, yeah. it might be the only thing left in the shop so we'll have to wait and see um, I've got that set up um, always nice to have bias lighting it's one thing I do like about Philips TVs yeah, cool. is the uh, is the ambulate. It's really really is a cool feature um, and I uh, finished the, the JVC so uh, that's all finished and um waiting for product coming in so hopefully fingers crossed product will come in for review so yeah monday's kind of make or break for me there's if, if stuff turns up tomorrow then we can probably i can probably sort of you know keep going for a couple of organizations but things are getting and it's not any fault i have to stress it's not the uk offices they're, they're you know they've still got people in them they're still functioning as normal but um uh, supply chains are already quite grievously interrupted in in some instances so yeah. it's a, okay. but you're going to see quite a heavy uk european bias to my content for the foreseeable future <laughs> well, simply because in part it's dictated by what i can get my hands on yeah and uh, there's a few big products that were you know pen to be coming and so on and uh you through the grapevine that we won't even see them this year that's yeah. how bad some things are at the moment. So, yeah, a bit scary at the minute in terms of mm-hmm. uh, where we're getting review product from. Um, so I think myself, Ed and Steve will be writing a lot of how-tos and uh, uh, tutorials. And, oh, Picture Perfect needs updating, so... Yeah. Yep, oh, no, no, no. I, I've got. So. I have actually. I had a brainstorming thing of ideas that I've had for for, for stuff to write about, and um, uh, that's fine. It. I just do want to keep supplying reviews because people like reviews. Um, but I do get messaged by people going, "Can you do X and Y?" And it's like, well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> because yeah. as it stands at the moment, if, if company know. if company X and Y still exist, then uh, yeah. we'll we'll do our best to try and do that. that. I was going to say, you'll get, you'll get what we gave you and you'll be happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is getting a bit like that at the minute. And just, you know, every industry is like this. Um, we're not the only one. Um, yes. Lots of people struggling. So, yeah, hopefully this doesn't stay around for too long. Um, and hopefully things blow over quickly. Okay, uh, so moving on to competitions, I think uh, we'll all take one. Uh, and go in rotation so it'll be myself Ed and then Steve so uh, win a copy of Criterion's March titles on Blu-ray 3rd of April uh, win a copy of Sorry We Missed You on Blu-ray that's open till the 18th of March you win a copy of The Good Liar on Blu-ray that's also open till the 18th of March win a copy of First Love on Blu-ray 19th of March Win a copy of Last Holiday on Blu-ray. That's quite timely. Uh, that's open to the 23rd of March. You can win a copy of Midway uh, on limited edition 4K Steelbook. Cracking soundtrack, cracking picture. OK, film. Uh, 25th of March, that's open to uh, Win a copy of Doctor Sleep on Blu-ray, 25th of March. Win a copy of Syncopation on Blu-ray, which is open till the 31st of March. You can win a copy of the appropriately titled Long Day's Journey in Tonight on Blu-ray, and that's open to the 31st of March. And win a copy of Superman Red Sun on Blu-ray on 31st of March. Lots more competitions are open and being added daily, so head over to avforums.com forward slash competitions to enter even more. And as always, the competitions are open to eligible AV Forums members resident in the UK. And previous competition winners, Ed? 
Oh, hang on. Sorry, I was uh, distracted there. Uh, previous competition. Oh, you've done this because the first one is yep. impossible to pronounce. Uh, Anetitur 9 won Peanut Butter Falcon on Blu-ray. Sonic 67 won Maleficent Mistress of Evil on Blu-ray. Uh, Psy Vision won Gemini Man on Blu-ray. So congratulations to you all. That's competitions. We'll be back in a sec with Hardware. Right, moving on. Uh, like I say, hardware news and so on. Um, there's not going to be a lot of news stories in the, uh, other than coronavirus and delays and so on. So let's move on to hardware reviews. We, we have been looking at some equipment. And Steve's been looking at a speaker package that I owned about eight years ago, Steve. Yeah, well, it was, I believe, um, it was the first THX Select certified speaker uh, 20 years ago. Uh, so it's yeah. been around a while. Um, the 750 series from MK Sound, M and K Miller and Kreisel. Actually, actually uh, now you say that it was more than eight years ago. Yeah, I think you probably you'll probably find it was a lot longer than you think. It's been around for two decades. All right, so um, it, was, it was probably about 2005 then, if I'm thinking about. Yeah, um, and now the company's obviously gone through a few changes since then. Uh, but M and K Sound, um, they basically given the 750 series uh, a makeover, uh, and what they've essentially done is taken the same basic principle which is a, a more affordable i say i say entry level but you know within their range it's kind of one of the entry levels uh, a more affordable version um of the s150 because it uses the same drivers and tweeters same woofers and tweeters as that uh, as the model i've got because i've got s150s in my home cinema um I, i'm using three yeah. s150s at the front and then i've got a couple of, of the s150 t's so tripod surrounds at the size and two at the rear so this uses the same drivers and tweeters, which means um, essentially you're getting a very similar performance, but obviously in a more, shall we say, user-friendly appearance. <laughs> because yes. I think, uh, let's be honest, I, I love my S150s. I know you've got the S300s. Uh, I think they sound amazing, but they are, you know, they're basically a studio monitor and they're not designed. For, I mean, actually, I like the look of them personally. Yeah. Well, mine's, <laughs> mine's are sitting in a black room and when you switch off the lights, yeah. you don't see so them. Mine. So. But actually, I quite like the look. I think it looks quite cool. But yes, they aren't necessarily what you would call lifestyle friendly. So the idea behind the 750 series is to uh, take those drivers, but put them into something that's a bit more a bit more user friendly and a bit more, you know, something you could have out on display and you wouldn't want to hide. So uh, the, the, it's a much more traditional. Because if you look at the uh, the 150 or the 300s, they have uh, three tweeters down the left-hand side and then two woofers on the right-hand side. I think, and, and uh, mirrors, so it depends on whether it's left or right-hand speaker. But you've got left, left, and then right. So. Yeah, that's right. This is a much more traditional layout with a tweeter at the top and then two woofers underneath. Um, but those tweeter, that tweeter and those two woofers are identical to the ones that they use in the, um, in the S150. So you're getting a very similar... Uh, sound quality, and I can t attest to that because I'm used to hearing them. So I, I mean, that kind of that uh, that transparency, that uh, that uh, um, neutrality and lack of coloration that you associate with MK uh, certainly applies to these speakers. Um, they're obviously smaller, although actually um, they are taller than because you think about it, they've got two two uh, woofers and a tweeter on top, so actually a little bit taller than the 150s, but they are overall smaller. Um, Significantly and, thinner, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, a lot thinner. Yes, a lot thinner. Uh, and they use a, a yeah, like I say, a more traditional layout. It's got a, a black vinyl cabinet and a metal grill, which you actually sort of like. There's two slots on either side of the uh, front fascia, and you and you basically uh, slot them in the slots, and they sort of they're spring loaded. So be careful when you're taking them off because they can yeah. fly and in your don't, face. And don't take them off because they're actually designed. To yeah, be they're used meant to be there. Yeah. They are actually part of the because they've got angled tweeters. So again, uh, if you look at the back of the because the the, the, um, the range comes with the LCR seven fifty and then the LCR seven fifty C. So the LCR seven fifty you get two in a pack. They're a thousand pounds for two, and uh, they're marked left and right. You need to put them in the right positions because the tweeters are actually angled to give you improved on axis and off axis performance. And then the LCR seventy seven fifty C is exactly the same, but uh, orientated to be placed on its on its side, so the the logo on the on the uh, grill and the binding posts at the rear uh, are orientated so that, so you could put it on its side. So obviously, to put it underneath uh, a TV or projector screen, you could of course also. There's no stopping you from just installing it upright like the other two speakers, yeah, so that they are 
Yeah, I was going to say that's exactly what I did as well, <laughs> because that way they're identical at the front of the room. Um, so it's, although it's you know it's it's been designed in terms of the the logo and the binding post to be placed on its side, there's no reason why you have to do that at all. It's just purely um, because most people might have, might be tight for space and want to put it under a TV, for example. Um, but yeah, like you, Phil, I put it upright, uh, and that way you had three identical speakers at the front of the room, which is what you really want because you want a nice uh, balanced front soundstage. And 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 because they all use exactly the same drivers, and that includes the surround speakers, the SU double R fifty five T. Again, same tweeter, same woofer, and that's also got two side firing because these are tripods as side firing drivers as well. So you get a get a, you get a, a, a nice precise um, delivery, but also you get a bit the width, a bit more width either side of the, of the surround to give you that more sort of increased surround presence. Um, but because they all use the same uh, tweeters and woofers, you do get a nice nice tonally balanced system. Um, Which and, makes a huge difference. Yes, it does. When, you, when you're watching something with a very directional soundtrack. So, for example, I mentioned Midway, one of the prizes. Watching something like Midway, where planes are zooming around <laughs> left and right and front to back, there's no uh, obvious change in tone as, it, as, the, as the sound moves around the room, which is ideal. Um, and also on a, on a more subtle, something like Joker. I think you were talking about the scene in Joker when he's on, when he imagines himself yeah. on the Murray Franklin show, and the camera moves around the studio, and the studio, the house band, the sound that they're, that they're making moves with with the point of view of the camera. So you get you get a nice smooth transition around the room uh, as the camera moves, and you don't get this. And there's no sort of obvious gaps or sudden changes in timber between one of speaker and the next, uh, which is great. Um, so totally balanced neutral sounding um not everyone's going to like that some people like a warmer speaker but these are these are you know these essentially are offspring of studio monitors and therefore are designed to deliver exactly what is there on the recording you know warts and all so uh bear that in mind but you know th these uh the one area where you know and again it's because they are essentially designed as more of a monitor is they they, they bottom out at 80 80 hertz so I think the yeah the does, the design to do that go down to yeah. seventy five and you'll three hundred go down to sixty. But they're designed to do that. The whole point is you use them with a sub. They're they're a multi channel speaker. Yeah, there's the um, satellite and, and speaker make, basically. Yes, so. essentially, essentially they're satellite speakers. And you want to use them with a sub, and I use them with well my two V twelves. So I think you did a review of the S one fifties, and it was basically the system I've got with one fifties and a couple of V twelves yeah. at the front, which is the largest of MKs compact subwoofers so i think you've got the x12s haven't you i do yeah which yeah, are quite big <laughs> considerable difference yeah absolutely i mean they are awesome subs but they are a big sub now this is obviously a system that's designed to be used in smaller you know, environments and lounges and places like that where you don't necessarily want you don't have to have two subs by the way I mean, i've got two and there are advantages to having two but obviously you can buy this as a package uh one sub front left and right center and two surrounds for three thousand six hundred uh three thousand six hundred and fifty quid uh, which is half the price of buying the same system with the S150s. So uh, I, I think bang for buck, it's a really nice little package that um, gives you a lot of the benefits of the more expensive S150s, but at a, at a significantly reduced price, and also with a more user-friendly appearance, and they're smaller and easier to fit into a, into a, into more average living spaces. The 750s were my entry point into M and K. Um, yeah, and I think and, that's exactly what they are. They are yeah. the entry point. And this, this was a number of years ago, and I've got to say it took some time for me to get used to the sound because I, up until that point, I used Bowers and Wilkins uh, which 60s, very, very which are really have a distinctive <laughs> warm sound to them uh, and a bit of coloration there. And these are not that. They do not flatter bad recordings. You get back absolutely everything that is there. And if that's not what you want, then you are going to have issues with, with, with this set of speakers. But if what you're looking for is exactly what's on the tin um, mm -hmm. and how it's supposed to be, and, and these are, um, like Steve says, offsprings of the, the actual studio monitors that are used on dubbing stages and so on to create some of the, the soundtracks that you hear, then you know for that job, they are absolutely brilliant. And even with music, I found them really quite musical. Um, yeah, but again, uh, it's a sound you need to get used to. If you're used to a warm, laid-back sound, you're not going to like them. But if you want a, a, a dynamic speaker with a nice, a nice attack to it, but at the same time you're hearing everything that's on the recording, then they are a very, very good speaker. 
they are. They're an excellent. I mean, I, I said in the review, they're a studio mon- monitor. They offer studio monitor performance, but without a professional premium. And I think that that's that's my view on them. As you say, Phil, if you want an entry into the world of M and K, and and there's kind of more studio monitor orientated kind of speakers with a very a very transparent and neutral sound that just shows you exactly what's on the recording. And as you say, if that's not for everybody, uh, then these are definitely worth uh, investigating. Yeah, you d- you sidelining in a copywriter there, Steve. That sounded like a out of the pamphlet, to be honest. What? <laughs> what you Man, just said? No, 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 no. I'm just, I made it up. But, uh, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> that's my that's my you know yeah. my line. Well, if things do get worse, you know, you could always uh, you know whore yourself out as a copywriter. Well, it's that or a well, who's going to be fiction? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I really like them. I mean, compared to the S150s, and obviously I can directly compare them because I've got them, um, yeah, the, the s 150s still have the edge, but you know, are they twice as good? No. <laughs> no. It's, it's what you want at the end of the day. I always wanted 150s, um, and the 750s were all I could afford at the time. Well, yeah, exactly. Because it's double yeah, the know. price, you know what I mean, to go up to the 150s. And I'm not saying that 3,600 quid is cheap, because clearly that isn't. That's still a lot of money, but I think for what you're getting for that money, they are, they are great value. Yeah, good stuff. Right, let's move on. Let's go uh, an all-in-one system from yeah. Marantz. Now, this is a new approach, or is it a new approach? Because they're certainly pitching it as a new approach to the all-in-one system, Ed, but Marantz have done a few of them in the past. They have, and also, their, let's face it, their um, sister brand, Denon, could yeah. be credited with inven- creating the template for how they've been for the last 20 years mm. um, with the original DM30. Uh, the product is the Marantz Melody X. Mel- oh, we can't work out if it's Melody 10 or Melody X, but um, what Marantz has done is very, very clever because if you, as I say this in the review, if you were against all odds replacing a 2000 era Denon DM30, which you bought when AV Forum started and it had lasted 20 years, you could use this in exactly the same way. It's got a CD mechanism, it's got an FM radio, and it's got an auxiliary input. You could literally just straight swap, and they would it, the the Marantz would perform in, in exactly the same fashion. Obviously, in the ensuing 20 years, we've made some other progress. So what's clever is that there's all the extra functionality has been added without compromising any of that original original sort of core oper- operability. It's um, a HEOS product, so it will drop into a HEOS network. It's got the HEOS multi-streaming uh, system. It is fitted with digital inputs. Unlike the Marantz NR1200 that I looked at a little bit back, there's no HDMI connectivity. Um, given the products are the same price, that's perfectly logical because you know you've got to have a clear ground between between the two of them. Um, but there are the 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 one interesting feature that it has is um, it's got a 60 watt internal amplifier. But it's got f- two sets of speaker outputs, so the amp can automatically divide to become a four times thirty watt amplifier. Um, now systems have had this for donkey's years, and I always thought it was as much use as a handbrake on a rowing boat because for as long as you were listening to a CD or something like that, not having control in the second room because you needed line of sight for the remote made made this an entirely pointless feature. It's the sort of thing where people thought, oh, that would be handy, and then you never, ever used it. Because, of course, this is app-driven, if you don't want to go down the multi the, the HEOS route or you simply have uh, an, a, just a pair of speakers going spare, all of the control issues have been solved in this. So if you do, do just want really affordable multi-room, multi-room, you can just bolt a pair of long speaker cables onto the back of it and, and run to a second room. Um, it's got the same pros and cons as the NR1200 in terms of control. HEOS is not my favourite app. I don't like the uh, the fact that there's a second stage in um, in asking it to play music. It's like, do you want to add to the queue? Do you want to replace the queue? No, I just want you to play. Don't return to music I was playing three hours ago in the, in the hope that I had some in, retaining interest in that, because I don't. Um, it's tremendously annoying, and it's highlighted by the fact that, obviously, because it has a CD mechanism, it that performs exactly as I would anticipate it to do. Um, but it's a good product. Uh, the sound is intriguingly a little bit different to the balance that the NR1200 has. I think it's a slightly warmer, more forgiving 
sounding device than the uh, than the NDR nr1200 sorry and um it manages to do all of this whilst looking perfectly inoffensive uh, i wouldn't describe it as beautiful by any stretch of the imagination but it's it's a, a nice looking product it's well made uh the display is clear and easy to read it has a full function remote control in addition to the uh control app which means that uh you can control it by a variety of means and you can do my standard pet hate or, or avoid my standard pet hate of um struggling to mute it if someone calls you on the device that you were using to control it with um there's reasonable streaming service support the only notable absence is cobuzz uh and it would appear that they're working on that um so yes it's it's an interesting one because i don't know i mean i'm assuming from the fact that Marantz has seen fit to make it that there's still quite the market for these things i mean i had assumed it would start to be sort of eaten by um smart speakers and so on and so forth but it it does an awful lot of things very very well and i can see the virtue of it uh so yeah it gets it gets a strong review and it's it was it was a very enjoyable product to spend time with and i'm now looking at it sat in my rack and thinking i probably ought to send that back to Marantz at some point so um you know but that's an occupational hazard it's a big rack so you can just leave stuff in there for ages <laughs> but no it's um it's it, it's it's interesting because it, it it's a, a different solution to i suppose the, the, the smart speakers and so on and so forth and i would say uh it's performance just taking the optical out from my b7 and listening and, and watching television through it was very very good indeed so it still has that in its favor as well okay so you didn't feel like you were lowering yourself too much by reviewing this product ed seeing as you've been Can living we... in the high end for a while well um i have uh some interestingly affordable things coming up i try wherever possible it's very very easy especially for hi-fi reviewers to disappear into the firmament of you know if it's less than five grand i'm not interested um a good product is a good product is a good product uh so uh there's a, a 350 pound turntable coming up there is a, a tiny tiny digital to analog converter coming up as well um uh, i i still enjoy seeing what, and 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 experiencing what manufacturers can do with um with with limited budgets the other thing and i think this is very psychological you may disagree with me on this av reviewers i as long as i'm listening to music that i enjoy christ i do it on a fisher price tape recorder um so you know obviously there's a i have it you know there's still links to a, a playlist of 10 tracks which i use for test work but i enjoy listening to all of those 10 tracks and i don't really mind if i'm listening to those on kudos titan 505s at seven grand or the um uh audio quest dragonfly cobalt which is in at the moment oh and missy that's still 270 pounds uh, although you can find it for less than that but ne nevertheless i don't sit there going oh i'm slumming it i'm listening to stuff that i enjoy and as we've discussed in the past um people say oh all the stuff you review gets good reviews this is because we have a limited number of reviews i i'm sorry i don't get product in if i think i'm going to issue it a kicking it's just life is too short what i'm hoping to do with the slots is is bring good product to your attention i try and do it in as many points yeah. as i can um so yeah uh, i i do try and make sure i self-select stuff which is, is 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 going to be worth bringing to your attention because we only have a finite number of slots to do it i mean obviously who knows coronavirus may tax this to breaking point um but hopefully not I, I hope to continue to bring <laughs> You're busy self-selecting and self-isolating exactly yes lots of self self-satisfaction as that well. explains yes. all that um, toilet paper mate oh come on that's disgusting you need to have a box of tissues uh, what i don't have to yes you do <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> you just the idea of there being a, what, a roll of toilet roll next 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 to your bed or even worse your sofa oh no i'm sorry that's just horrendous <laughs> or whatever park he's in <laughs> self-isolating mark i'm not going out very much at the moment <laughs> no I, I stand in my garden uh, although it's full of cat shit so it's not the most <laughs> fragrant or refreshing undertaking at the moment anyway so. that's the marantz melody x <laughs> <laughs> oh this i don't think we've we've kept on track at all the, this podcast so far so god help us where we're going next anyway uh, film news is next
Okay, moving on to uh, film news because we ain't got any cinema reviews because none of us are. Gonna... And I don't think there's going to be many. <laughs> uh, how did you cancel your Limitless card? Because uh, I'm having real issues finding uh, a number or how. Oh, to... uh, yes, they do not make it easy. I had to spend about twenty minutes trying to find the. Uh, I think uh, in the, in the end, you just have to do. You know, you can't just talk to them online. I've looked for. Oh no, it was a phone number. There was a phone number, right. and I rang that phone number, and that told me to bring another phone number. I rang that phone number. I think I'm... <laughs> that didn't work about twice. Uh, it was they. So, so what they're not... what they're hoping for is that you think, oh, to hell with this, I'll just keep it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it, yeah, you would hope that in the event of the apocalypse, you're not still seeing direct debits going out of your account. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm trying. To, why I'm trying to get rid of it at the minute. I mean, I'll take it back. You know, I mean, we're going to have the cinema this year, are you? Let's be honest. So. No, so probably the end of the year, we're probably going to have a whole slate of you know films to <laughs> go and watch. Movies Very busy the year, November and December. Yeah. yeah, so I'll I'll get it back again. I'll sign up again when it when it's there's something to watch. But I'm not spending eighteen quid a month for sitting in my house. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but they're making it really, really difficult. Really difficult. So I'll have to try yes. and cancel now, that. Now you reminded me, it was not an easy process. Or at least finding who to talk to was not an easy process. Once I got hold of the right person, it was quite simple. And they just, I said, I want to cancel. They went fine. Um, but yeah, getting that person took a while. Right. I've just signed a new contract with BT Sport. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be well, you. you can watch nothing in 8K. So that'd be excellent. <laughs> Have they found a way of, of making sure Liverpool don't win the Premiership yet? I just just I, void it. No, I, I, I we can watch virus may have explode from Spice no. City. No, no, I, I, gen, gen, genuinely, I have given, no given sense of humour over that. Given the fact that they won won the league pretty much, and yeah. unless they lost every single game for the rest yeah. of the season, they still exactly. pretty much have won. Yeah. It. Which, they, which, I think uh, they have to give them the. To be honest, even if not, win, uh, the fact that they're still the modicum of uncertainty does just add an element of perfection to it that <laughs> well, after 30 years of hurt it still wasn't emph- as emphatic as it was supposed real to win, is it? It went, but the, the, was there not a chairman did did one of the chairmen not say oh, we should null and void the whole season so no relegation, no yes. winners no. Well, the, well, uh, was presumably Brady, someone in, it was in, Brady who's at the bottom of the table so of course you said right, okay. I thought somebody had said that anyway, uh, we're supposed to be doing film news um, and uh, over, no. over to Steve um, because we, we've lost another star. I'm assuming Matt Sonsita didn't die of coronavirus. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. died no. of being 90. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yes, Matt Sonsito, uh has passed away at the age of 90. Uh, a, a man who is probably best remembered. You think, oh, Matt Sonsito, serious actor, um, was in, you know, obviously, in a number of Ingmar Bergman films, you know, played chess against death in, in the Seventh Seal. Um, but actually... I suddenly realised he'd been in a hell of a lot of genre films too, uh, including yeah. some of my favourites. Playing I know, Ming it's the Merciless, it's weird looking through his filmography, isn't it? And you suddenly go, "Of course, he was Ming the Merciless." Ming the Merciless. He was um, judge, the chief judge in Judge Dredd. Um, obviously, he was the Exorcist in The Exorcist. You know, he's done. But you know, the thing, even the, when he was in films that were absolute crap, he was always class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in more judge recently. Dredd. Yes, he was in Judge Dredd. He was the chief judge, yeah, yeah. Uh, chief justice, and also, of course, he was a three-eyed raven in Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, no, uh, Matt Sonsito, uh, was a, he was a class act. Uh, he's in he, Rush he, Hour did, Three, he, apparently. Oh, yes. he, did, he did Star Wars, didn't he? He did one. Of yes, the Star Wars. he was in uh, Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. He's yeah. done Star Wars, Bond, and he was Jesus. That's not a bad. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as, as trios go, that's um, yep. He's got, he's got the Holy Trinity there, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, Matt Sonsito, was, you know, uh, he was I, I, he was acting right up until the end. I mean, he, he clearly he's still very active until, until quite recently. So, um, yes, a a long and impressive career. Oh, my God, I didn't realise he was the voice of Vigo in Ghostbusters I know. 2. Yeah. I didn't realise that either. Wow. Yeah, he's 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 done a lot of stuff. You say, like, oh, I've forgotten yeah. he was even in. There. It's it's nice to see that everybody did their research before recording this <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell everybody's making their way down his filmography at the minute. Well, <laughs> yes, maybe. It's a long film. It's a, it's quite extensive. Yeah. Um, but he'll be missed. He'll be missed. Yeah. No, a, a huge body of work. Um, and yeah, he's uh, quite an influential actor um and and it's a shame we're losing the real big names um 
they're all hitting their nineties, so and uh, you know, Kirk Douglas for hundred and odd. So yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's, n- it's not in, in an absolute sense. It's not. I don't begrudge someone who is ninety from. The, I, you can't really say they were gone too soon, can you? That, no, it, they are. You're right. They're links back to a more golden age of which film. is which is what I was trying to get. At. Yeah, but nevertheless, in so far as they've successfully done those i mean obviously the moment that we lose electricity or the em pulse kicks in um then it'll be harder to see their work but for the moment we we have we have their legacy on film so what um, what was cars talking about with the new war of the worlds i'm three episodes in i am really enjoying it is it good i I I, I didn't bother watching it after cars was poo-pooing it last week i mean obviously obviously it's not perfect it's made for tv um there's some junk you know clunky dialogue in there but what I really like is they've, they've contemporized the whole thing. So there's none up to the third episode anyway. There's no tripods and all that kind of thing that you think about the world. It's it's it's, it's so up to date though, Steve. You'd really like it because it's it's going for this the science and technology angle. Um, there's there's elements of it that are really really creepy. I jumped a couple of times and I don't normally jump at oh, stuff. I'll, and, I'll check it out. I so, mean, I've got. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be at home quite a bit over a couple of months. So. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I mean, but, thank God, a week on Tuesday we get Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I paid for that last week as well. So yeah, dying to see Mandalorian. Um, but no, it, it I, I, I guess Kaz was just you know you watch so much of this stuff that I suppose you do get a bit jaded, especially when you're watching stuff critically, which is why you know I moved away from movie reviewing as soon as I could, um, disc mm-hmm. reviewing that kind of thing because it spoils it, doesn't it? Really. You know, if you've got to sit and watch something critically, then you're not actually enjoying it, I don't think. So, um, So yeah, three episodes in. Like I say, I mean, it's clunky. Some of the character stuff that they do is... It's what you would expect from a TV movie um, or made for TV. Um, but it's all up there on the screen. It's a scope ratio. Um, and the effects are pretty good that I've been on so far. So, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend what it. What service is this on? Uh, it'll be Now TV. It's on it's Sky. Fox, it? Yeah, it's Fox, Fox yeah. Yeah, it's Fox, yeah. Well, so um, um, Matt Sonsino passed away, and um, and then after this quick, quick succession, unsurprisingly, after a discussion last week, a whole raft of movies have basically cancelled their releases. Um, a Quiet Place Two, Mulan, and New Mutants. I, the new, new Mutants made me laugh because I think we were talking about it last week. That film was supposed to come out two years ago, <laughs> and it was just about to get released. And no, no. So those haven't even got release dates now. They've just been postponed indefinitely. Yeah. And then Fast and Furious Nine. Has been pushed back to April 2021. Now, they were going to release Fast and Furious 10 on that date, um, so I guess it made sense to think, well, we're not going to be shooting that anytime soon by the looks of it, so we might as well use that date. That's right. So they didn't shoot and it back to back. I think they they may have shot some of it back to back. They were definitely talking about releasing the, the second one, so they would have been shooting it now. But I guess they're like, okay, that's not going to happen. So let's so, so we've got to wait some time. We've got to wait another year to find out how the hell they're going to bring Han back. Yes, basically. it's a bit annoying. I was quite looking forward to uh, yeah. to this. Um, <laughs> now, so I mean, Black Widow opens at the beginning of May. I, I assume we're going to see that get pushed back. I guess what Marvel do is just shunt everything along. So rather than coming out now, Black Widow comes out in November, and Eternals goes from November to next February or March or April, whenever they've got the next uh, film lined up for. Um, because it, I mean, opening a film now just seems utterly pointless. Cinemas are going to be shut pretty soon. Did they um, ever have the uh, premiere for New Mutants, or was it shelved before? No, they, no but they, they had loads of journalists around on the set uh, when it was being shot in 2017, uh, and then it yeah, it just kept getting delayed and delayed, and then there were, it was definitely opening <laughs> like next week or something, or in early April, and then like, no, that's cancelled too, so... I got that. That's the kind of film I suspect might pop up on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, well, a quiet place too. That was supposed to be open on Friday. So yes, that's, but yeah, uh, that's been delayed yeah. indefinitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we can safely say that any major release or any film release, really, at this point, is going to get pushed back to at least later in the year. Yeah. So I mean, what what the cinema chain is going to do? I mean, obviously, in the UK, the the three big major chains they should survive. There'll, there'll be job cuts and they'll have to close, them, and they'll close, have to close and all sorts but, close them and lay people off and temporarily yeah but they should see it through but you've got smaller chains um, and art house cinemas which could really really struggle um, I but, know we don't generally do 
uh, politics, um, but it would appear that both the UK government and uh, certainly the German government is looking at uh, I can't, I'm sorry I can't remember the guy's name and I don't know how to find it but there is a very long and very detailed treatise about uh, the mechanics of how you bail it's not it, it when, when it's not a bailout when essentially government intervention is required to sustain parts of infrastructure which uh, under normal circumstances are functioning just fine um, uh, it's simply bridging loan things. There's a, a, a very, uh, it's a well, relatively well regarded technical treaties. Um, like uh, emergency subsidising. Yes, essentially that. Um, now that's not to say that it's going to happen, but it's certainly on the radar of, of a couple of a couple of uh, places. Uh, and it's interesting because it doesn't necessarily look after everything because obviously I noticed that uh, Richard Branson was asking for a, you know a, a quick seven and a half million and I don't uh, essentially on organizations where there is a, uh, a shareholder element to it the whole idea of shareholders is that you support you benefit from the, the profits and you then uh, mitigate the risks so I think they might be invest asked to, to go to their shareholders first uh, but nevertheless, um, I feel slightly more heartened. Who knows? It could yet turn to worms. But there are there is a, a, a piece of a quite well regarded economic thinking about what one does under these circumstances, which has not been disregarded yet by the by the government. And this is for the small guys, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which, which is fine because this is yeah. not that they haven't mismanaged their business. They haven't done anything silly. Yeah. This is uh, force majeure, isn't it? There's something completely outside their control. Um, and and I think that's the kind of thing the government should be supporting. No, totally. Uh, and if they have to close the high street down and so on, um, which is what they're talking about, um, you know, restaurants and pubs and all all the rest, that they're all small businesses, you know, the vast majority of them anyway. So, yeah, don't want to see that. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. If the government simply says, do you know what, Ed, no corporation tax this year, I'll make it through. Um, you know, just throwing it out there. If you are listening and you're in charge of HMRC <laughs> tax policy, um, I'll, I'll 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 suck it up from there. So uh, yeah, all good. All right. Okay. Um, also says that any any mileage you've done on your rental car. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I accept that. That's all part of uh, part and parcel of uh, of my own stupidity. But um, yeah, if they want to support me, a small business, <laughs> just just waive a tax bill. It's fine. Right, so um, for those of us who uh, feel like risking it and going out and uh, mingling, uh, the film's being released this week. Um, they've got 2019 dates next to them, so obviously they're not new. Uh, they've, they've probably been sitting uh, on the shelf for well, a while. Well, they were shot last year, but I think their UK releases were... Um, I don't think Jesus Rolls is actually... Uh, I don't think it's opened in the States, or well, maybe it was... Um uh, on a, a streaming service or something like that. But anyway, The Jesus Rolls, which is a spin-off from The Big Lebowski about Jesus Quintana, um, played memorably in that film by John Tortoro, who's also the director uh, of this film. Although it's not written by the, the Kern brothers, so it's it's an offshoot, but kind of you know, not by the not by the Coens. Um, but he was a funny character, although, you know, it's, it's a character that's funny for literally two minutes in a film may not be necessarily funny for an hour and a half. It's uh, 4.5 on IMDb. Then I guess not. Which might explain why it's <laughs> opening now. I thought he was quite annoying uh, as the role he had in those two Transformers films, so I, I don't necessarily... I, I, it's not necessarily an actor, which I feel is entirely up to having a film centred around him. He but is that's... very, very funny. That his appearance in the Big Lebowski is very funny, but it is. I mean, also, but part of it, he's a child blaster, isn't he? So who wants to see a film about a child blaster? Uh, anyway, that's out, and also Radioactive, which is a biography of um, Mary Curie, We're played by um, uh, Rosamund Pike, hopefully with a Polish accent because she was not French. Uh, and uh, yeah, that opens uh, this week as well. So, okay, just yeah, boots. Uh, well, 4K wise, nothing. Um, <laughs> There's been sod all out so far this year, I have to say. Um, obviously, we've got hopefully all the Star Wars stuff coming in September, but I'm sorry, in April. <laughs> well, maybe it's September. It's in September. April. It's a Freudian slip. There. Yeah, Freudian well, slip there. Le, Le Mans is out next week because my pre order's still sitting there, so that, that's out I've next already week. got. I've already got that from from. Uh, 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 anyway, so nothing on 4K, unfortunately. Uh, BD wise, 
we have Superman Red Sun review on the front page at the moment, I believe. Um, I've read the comic, the graphic novel Red Sun. It's really good, so that's actually might be worth checking out. There's The Good Liar, which is also a competition prize. We've got Anatomy of a Murder, which I have seen and, and quite enjoyed. Um, that's a Criterion release. And Season 12 of Doctor Who, Avoid Like the Plague. It's bloody awful. I, no, it's Avoid Like the Coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, that was another Freudian slip. <laughs> Uh, TV and streaming right uh, well Monday uh, when this podcast goes up uh, we've got Westworld's back season 3 so I am quite looking forward to that do, is this, do they tend to do it weekly or do, is it on it's one? weekly it's, it's weekly. HBO it'll no, be weekly no, no. and I think normally they, they they simul broadcast it with the US broadcast so it's very early Monday morning so you know you can watch it later on on Monday you can or get whatever. up work yeah. from home and watch web- watch, watch it web- at, a, <laughs> at a time that suits you or I'll, I'll watch uh, it so after I finish editing this together so um, that's starting on, on Monday so I'm quite interested in seeing how, where that goes season 2 didn't do it for me entirely but there's still some really interesting ideas in this series and in the, in the, in the, 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 the problem is is as I mentioned it last week it's the way they jump between the timelines and and in season yeah, which two, which worked in the first season, yeah. but felt unnecessary in the second season. Well, it just got too complicated. It, uh, it, you know, you were yeah. you were spending more time thinking about well, where does this fit in with what I'm watching? So, see, I would rather they get the kind of duff season out round season two, mm. and then I think they've got a chance to recover. It's it's when you get something that's kind of rolls up to about season three and it's all been absolutely stellar and then it just kind of falls off a cliff or does they, seven good seasons and then balls it up with the last one <laughs> exactly so it, it you know I, I would rather they got that kind of reaction as to what people liked and disliked about season two and i i think th- there's still a solid platform for it from there yeah um, but I, there were some interesting ideas introduced in season two things about you know trying to put a human consciousness into a into a, a host body which seems like an obvious, you know, if you're thinking about it, it's like if you can create something so lifelike and almost sentient, that has to be the next stage, isn't it? To you know, essentially create uh, immortality. So um, those are interesting ideas. And now that the robots are out in the real world, it could also be quite interesting. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And it's got, I just miss the problem with season two. I probably, it wasn't so much the, the way it was you know, edited, so you didn't know what was going on after time. But I really missed Anthony Hopkins because he was fantastic mm. in the first season. He was season. absolutely magnificent. Yeah. What a performance. Yeah. Um, although, so, although he, he did feature in season two, but it wasn't yeah, very no, often, he was, so. But yeah, not not as much um, as he was in season one where he was a dominant you know, dominant part of the, of the storyline. Uh, also out uh, on, I think, Friday with Netflix is Altered Carbon Resleed. So this is like an anime uh, offshoot of Altered Carbon. Um, I was a bit disappointed by season two, but I might check this out because... Uh, because you know there's still potential there. It's an interesting idea and an interesting world. So uh, that's out. And there's also the banker, which I think is that Amazon or maybe now TV. But uh, that's a series with uh, I think Samuel L. Jackson, isn't it? About uh, a couple of African Americans who set up. Um... Is that one not Apple? Oh, you're right, Apple. I knew I'd seen it somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I was going yeah. through. I was going through Apple stuff when I was watching um, Amazing Stories on Friday, and I think, oh, that looks interesting. Yes, you're right, uh, Mark. Apple. So that's an app. So that's HBO or um, Now TV for work, Westworld. Altered Carbon will be Netflix, and The Banker is on Apple. There's so many bloody streaming services, and we've got another one starting next week as well. Week on Tuesday, they, they we are going to. Um, going to um, going to come in bloody handy, I think. Yeah, yes, I think so. Uh, they, I'm sorry, they're going to they're, they're going to own the fucking world. I mean, basically, this is right now buy Netflix and Disney stock. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I can't argue with that. I mean, obviously, uh, I'll be interested. Do we? Uh, does anyone know? Um, if uh, the Frozen Two thing is applying to the UK as well or not. I I think well I, see, I don't see why not. It's not like the, the release date was the same as the US, so it would have been well, the same no, Frozen Two thing. Well, uh, Disney has uh, bumped up the uh, arrival of Frozen Two on streaming service because in the in the wake of UK uh, US school closures, uh, I mean obviously it's a double edged sword for parents. The first two times it's you know useful for keeping your kids quiet, but you know the twenty eighth and thirtieth. Um, run, run, run through is going to get quite wearing, yeah. and probably going to have you Irishing up your coffee at you know seven thirty in the morning. But um, no, nevertheless, it's admirable. 
uh, a- a- any and all gestures like this, I'm not. I'm not going to be be too sniffy about that. Well, Pornhub are giving free premium to all Italians, aren't they? I saw that as well. <laughs> yes, um, solidarity. Yeah. You know, it, 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 this is where this is essentially where the internet starts to just own everything, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> so long as you can keep a skeleton crew of people, you know, making sure the servers don't catch fire. Um, yeah. It's uh, and um, it, it, it's. I mean, who knows? This may even be the opposite. Given that, obviously, I'm I'm assuming that television filming is going to be as affected sooner or later uh, as 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 film uh, shooting. Uh, then it's going to fall down on back catalogs. Who knows? This might be BritBox's time to shine or not. Well, BritBox uh, is it still a thing? Uh, for the at least the next ten or eleven days, yeah. So. Uh, okay. Good stuff, uh, Picard. By God, it's just gone to the wall. Isn't it? Are you still oh, watching? I, I stopped. Bo- I gave up. Sorry. Yeah. Is it just me, or like so? They've. Oh, t- I mean, I can't even pronounce it. So there's the Tar Shabal, whatever it's called, the <laughs> Romulan Secret Service, and then within that, there's the the Shash Bosh Bosh Gosh Bosh group. The Shish yes. Who are all women? Yeah. Again, it's like Jesus. There's no blokes left in the universe. <laughs> I mean, what is going on with this show? Apart from the title character. Oh, I, I, I'll tell you what did it for me. I nearly threw something at my screen, which would have been really expensive. Um, <laughs> the the, uh, the captain and his holograms and the engineer with his Sc- the fake Scottish accent. Oh, God, uh, that drove yeah. me mad. You should yeah. sue him for... The, 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 the problem is now it's so bad that I, I'm going to continue watching just to see where it, how oh, far I down the rabbit hole it goes. Got, they've got you that way. Yeah, I've given up. Uh, I've got records. Um, yeah, and, we know we've got I, records. I, I, although that said, I sat and watched the Transformer, uh, not tra- the Transporter, the original one last night. I'd forgotten how, how you know. I like that film. Ninety yeah. minutes of just genius, absolute genius. Yeah, they, they should start bringing that back. You know, ninety minutes is your maximum. That's if you're making a movie, it's ninety minutes. Yeah, Any, minutes. What, a special a tax to... break that after that point, <laughs> it can't, you, you get charged. I don't know, a million dollars a minute. <laughs> don't know. A friend popped over on Thursday, um, and uh, he had he hadn't seen Contagion, so I put that on for him and scared <laughs> the shit out of him. <laughs> it is a scary film. That it's, has it, disappeared it's from like terrifying tips, watching so. it now. Yeah. It's not on. I, I, it's gone. I checked across. It's not on. Um, the panic. Amazon. The panic buying it on eBay at the minute. They, seemingly, there's DVDs and Blu-rays going for about twenty quid. Oh, lovely. Well, it's it's, it's gone <laughs> off Amazon, uh, Netflix, and now TV. It's not on either of those, any of those. So, uh, I mean, do you remember? I mean, I thought it was wonderfully inappropriate that we could watch it on the plane a couple of years ago on Nor- on Norwegian Air on the way to CES it's like yeah that's cheery oh yeah, well they, they, they look like they're they're going under yeah unfortunately that's what you get well, with, though, if you're a budget airline that's a problem isn't it I mean even British Airways are saying they're, they're going to have to cut I mean don't get me wrong well. again there's a school of thought that says um, you know in all, airlines provided that we allow travel again after this <laughs> Who knows? Uh, the airlines are useful, so yes, some something yeah. will probably we need to... airlines. So they'll they'll come back, but it's just going to be tricky for a while, isn't it? Well, you can't argue with the fact that we are doing <laughs> tremendously well at CO two reduction. Yeah, yeah, that, that's been a definite plus point for this whole thing. The planet itself is dancing a jig right now because mankind stopped killing it for oh, a I, bit. I, I was reading something yesterday. You know, you get these conspiracy theories and so on. I was pissed myself laughing. I can't remember the exact word, and it was obviously somebody trolling and taking the mickey but they said it was the planet turning on us because of what we've done i know was that jamila <laughs> jamil and mother nature clapping back it's something like I mean, that if you, yeah. if you actually wanted to mark yourself out as a truly weapons grade moron i don't <laughs> have a better statement than that well mother nature has a way of you know redressing balance and uh, there's too many bloody people so see i heard it was 5g <laughs> <laughs> yes i've, I've, I've seen Huawei the 5G for this one. Or, or the Democrats. Oh God! You you, you basically bl- you know blame your uh, bl- pick your poison literally and uh, and blame that. So uh, yeah. Anyway, it's funny when do... America is blaming the Chinese for releasing it, and the Chinese have been blaming the Americans for releasing it. It's like it, I guess it's I the, guess it, no one did. It's the international version of whoever smelt it dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> I I did like the the tweet. I think I put it in the chat. It's a Scottish thing, and it's um. 
It's mind blowing how some boy in China ate a bat and it eventually led to the postponement of Brecon versus Elgin. <laughs> no, just um, like that sinking. That is the butterfly effect writ large, but with more bat eating. Um, I just like did you see that thing I stuck in just before we started with the um I mean any 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 video that makes use of the Avengers music is just good for that but um the uh, the thing I stuck in there with the toilet roll on the dog uh, uh, no, I, that I haven't, I haven't seen that yet anyway we need to wrap up on the podcast so um our final subject we we were doing the whole um depressing end of the world virus stuff and so on so let's flip it 180 degrees let's go for feel good movies we're going to be stuck inside what are the movies that we always go to 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 make us feel good and so on and one pop and, and the reason i put this in the the running order was i was uh, sitting watching sky flicking through sky and i caught the beginning of groundhog day and i absolutely adore that film and i hadn't seen it for such a long time and it just made me feel good when i got to the end of it um mm-hmm. it's just one of those movies that you know it's it doesn't matter how many times you've seen it and <laughs> Day, so you got good. to the end of it then started again yeah basically <laughs> were you still feeling good when you obviously there's that, ma- that mathematical calculation about how long to do piano ice sculpture and all the rest of it he was like in there for like Thousands seven years yeah <laughs> and it's like mm, that's, yeah. Um, yeah yeah but, but, but they do cover that side they do cover the mental health side don't they um they're trying to just kill themselves Rough continue <laughs> But yeah, that, I, again, that was you know one of these feel good movies. Uh, Steve, what do you? What, what's the one that you always go for? Mine is the Princess Bride, which Good I absolutely choice. love. Yeah. I love the Princess Bride. I love everything about it. I think it's perfect. I think it's, the cast is amazing. I think it's incredibly funny. It's charming. It's got some great action. Um, some fantastic sword fighting. Uh, it's got giants. <laughs> it's got, what more could you possibly want than the Princess Bride? Uh, so to to go mine. back to the eighties because that's two solid eighties films. And it, was it eighty nine? Oh, I think they're all going to be eighties, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, let's, I can't think uh, of anything recently that I would consider to be a feel good film. <laughs> I'm just thinking Groundhog Day was that eighties or was it? Uh, uh, it was actually nineties. Yeah, it was early nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, eighties and nineties. That's fine. But, uh, okay, okay, Mark. Oh, um, you know, I, I was going to say Princess Bride. I, I've always like. In fact, probably one of the only rom coms I actually like is The Wedding Singer. Yeah, I love that mm. film. Speaking uh, of the eighties. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the thing. It would have been that or maybe Anchorman. I do like, you know, <laughs> I think humour kind of derived from the fashion of the era just just works well. Um, I, th- I think the chemistry is just absolutely superb in The Wedding mm. Singer. It's just perfect. And and you're with, it, you're with them. And th- there's enough humour in there as well, I think. Uh, yeah. the, the kids are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And, and it's also got one of Steve Buscemi's best performances. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really good. Uh, another one for me would be Back to the Future. That just popped in my head. That's another one that I would yeah. definitely sit and yeah. watch. Um, yeah, great yeah. film. Yeah. I, think, so, um, I was going to say another film I really like watching um, is School of Rock. Uh I think that's really fun. Jack Black's one of his best performances, um, and a nice, good, feel-good ending for that one. So that's that's another one. Of my I think play. anything that's got a good score or good use of music, if if you like that, then you're going to like it. Go back to uh, Max von Sydow and something like Flash Gordon. I, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry, that, that's a great film. It's so it's bad, it's right. good. Yeah. It's so yeah. bad, that yeah, it's, it's really it's good. Camp is a Christmas tree, but um, but it, it's, it's so tongue-in-cheek as well. It's right? out on 4K disc this year. Ooh. So it looked well, pretty no, good, maybe. Maybe, no, yeah. All right, possibly. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe next year. Am I going to be asked, or are my thoughts too? Yeah, what, what records <laughs> What records do you go for? No, no, film. Yeah. Film, can be clear about this? And it's more modern than anyone's you suggested. It's a guilt. It, it comes under guilty pleasure as well, but uh, suit the original Super Troopers. Super Troopers 2 is a slightly different yes. category. But the first Super Troopers, you cannot watch that and not be in a good mood at the Meow. end of it. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's good. It I've has some it. absolute... You what? Never what? Seen. It's absolutely brilliant, and I've it's done on a budget of about eighty-five pence. Yeah, but it's got some sequences. I don't want to do any spoilers in that case. It's just fucking fantastic. It's it's a group of people thoroughly enjoying what they're doing, 
Um, and I, I absolutely adore that film, and it never fails to put me in a good mood. Really, the, really genuinely enjoyable. Yeah, same kind of feel as something like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, where you can tell they seem to have more fun making it than they were really bothered by you know, anyone else watching it. I mean, to be fair, that's another film that never fails to put me in a good mood. I mean, my original AV Forum's username is a reference to Jay and Silent Bob yeah, Strike Back. Tons original? of fun. <laughs> Uh, obviously that was back when Kevin Smith weighed something you know yeah. so um, <laughs> well um, Reboot's just turned up on Amazon oh uh, I love Kevin Smith uh, but that is not a good film is it not he um, yeah it's <laughs> I don't know I, 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 I laughed once and I, and I love like, Clarks and Clarks too and and uh, Dogma and uh, and Chasing Amy's the best scene in it is is um, when Ben Affleck turns up because he writes that scene from his heart and it really works but a lot of it's just really crap jokes that don't land a lot of time and you know Jay and Silent Bob are side characters they're funny in small doses but it's difficult to build a film around them yeah I would say that I mean in terms of Kevin Smith movies more rats is, in terms of just feel goodness more rats for me is, is by far the, the pick of the bunch um again it's the self-contained nature of um uh, uh, of, of how it's done and the rest of it i just think that's a good soundtrack as well mm-hmm. although there aren't many kevin smith films that don't in fairness no. I'd, i'm surprised you haven't said love actually steve You're well that was, that, I was, I was waiting to see if you were saying it because yeah it's, it's a film that <laughs> It's grown on me over the years because I thought it was crap when I first saw it. It's still crap. I like it now. It's still it does crap. have some horrible, creepy undertone bits to it, though. Oh, what? Uh, oh, well, this whole I mean, thing between the the guy the, the guy from Walking Dead and 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 Keira Knightley. Well, yeah, who is also just about not a child. In well, it. she's five years older than the kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like 17 <laughs> when they shot that film. 17. Um, yeah, she. Was, I didn't realize she was that young. Um, but yeah, I mean, but, it, it, yeah, it's got. It, it's definitely at the end with um, the Beach Boys and everything. You know, has it got any nose? I think it's at the end of the film. Um, it works really well as a feel-good film, uh, although it's got some quite sad bits in it actually. Well, yeah, you get to see Alan Rickman and realize that he's not with us. Mm. Oh dear, we're disappearing down a hole of a hole of <laughs> melancholy. We we'll always we we'll always get back to that, don't we? We we'll always. Um, I would say because uh, again I cropped up on television not that long ago I do love Cool Runnings thoroughly <laughs> enjoy watching that uh, um, it, it's it, again it's not too long it doesn't overstay its welcome and it it, 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 it has a it has heart for want of a better description I, I you know I, I always I, 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 I don't generally end up watching that and feeling more depressed than when I started so you know I would say that that would be on on the list as well. I'd probably add thinking of John Candy, planes, trains, and automobiles as one of my. Those I don't pillows? know. That makes me anxious. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> um, but no, that is is a crack. It's a fantastic film. Well, you've got the whole uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and the the underlying is is it all in Cameron's head theory, which I can't watch that film now and not think about that. Um, but again, that's another eighties feel good thing, isn't it? So, Blues Brothers. Uh, I have to say, any time the Blues Brothers is one of those cri- things. The moment it, if I find that that is on a terrestrial TV channel within twenty minutes of it starting, I will watch it to the end. My favourite uh, line: "I have always loved you." <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the funniest scenes in cinema history. It's the look on the other guy's face that sells that whole gag as they fall for miles. <laughs> Uh, that's coming out on uh, well, that's supposed to be coming out on 4K disc uh, in um, in in May 2022. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, time for its 50th anniversary. Yeah, but well, one that um, I think gets overlooked quite a bit, um, but I absolutely love it just in terms of um, telling a story because it's told in such a beautiful way and it's a fantastic film with a fantastic score and everything else and nobody, it, there's no dialogue in it for at least the first 40 to 50 minutes and that's Wally. Mm, yeah. I absolutely adore that film. Uh, after that it's, it, it becomes much more of, uh, I mean I would say it's probably a reflection on me as a character but, but it's, I mean Super Troopers I could watch under almost any circumstances. Other things are slightly m- much more mood dependent. It becomes more 
of a you know do you want to do you want is it are you looking for escapism so on and so mm. forth okay well i mean obviously i pitched it as you know feel good movies but if if we are going to be trapped um in in the house as normal for us three anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? What is it you, you, you got to fill the time with? Uh, I, I mean, we're going to sit and watch streaming services and new films and so on. But is there is is there anything where you think right? I'm going to sit because you you're one for marathon movies or marathon movie watching, Steve. So you know what is it if you really wanted to get into the cinema or or just lose yourself in a movie? What is it that you pick up? Well, I've wanted to kill a significant amount of time. I just stick on Lord of the Rings. That takes me twelve hours to get through that fucking. Like, That's Monday. Sho- shoving the Hobbit too, and you, you got a good two days gone there. In fairness, I will get Apocalypse Now rewatched in this. Uh, oh yes, I've, I've got my disc. I, I would hesitate to describe that as a feel-good film. I need to be very clear about <laughs> no, this. No, okay. But it is nonetheless one of my favourite films of all it's, time. It's a masterpiece in filmmaking as well. You, know, you watch that now and you just think how Against the hell the odds. Yeah, you watch it now and you just think how the hell did they make that you know, um, and, and again a lot of that was done in the editing as well which is you know what how Star Wars was successful you know it wasn't shot that way it was how it was edited and put together um, that, that made that work and this, again with Apocalypse Now because you can look at the, the different versions now and the tightest one is still the theatrical mm. version yeah, I prefer the theatrical version personally. I know you've got your various reasons, Ed, but uh, for me it works best as a theatrical cut. Uh, that's Soul a, obviously that's a, a good film. A pretension and being forced to read Heart of Darkness at school <laughs> as to why I have slightly different reasons. But no, in ter- no, you in terms of let, let's face it, none of them are exactly a tight cut. But no. never, <laughs> it, no. it is never, it's nevertheless. Hours and four minutes it, 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 it's, I remember um, reading Heart of Darkness and just thinking. What what point do the guns come out? Where are the helicopters? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Star Wars. I have to glass as a feel good film. I could watch yes. Star Wars over and over and over and over and over and have watched yeah. it over and over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've watched I've it at least a hundred times. So. One I want you to raise because it is a favourite of mine. It's not really a feel good movie, but again, it's one of these off the wall movies. And just thinking about it, it actually fits in with the modern times and what's happening right now. And it was one that I completely missed when we did our. Um, you know, favorite apocalypse movies and all the rest of it. Twelve Monkeys. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I still get it, it's still a film I can watch now and pick up stuff that that I missed the last fifteen times mm-hmm. I watched it. Um, and and the way it was directed, the the art design, you know, there's stuff all over the place. Uh, if you pay attention to what's actually going on, it's um, you know, I still get something out of that watching it now. Time Bandits, that's a great feel good movie. Oh, I enjoy Time, time. Bandits. I love Time yeah. Bandits. Yeah. Although it has got a slight, I say feel good, but the ending I was gonna say. is strangely, mm. you know, you're know, like his parents are killed. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, uh, where are we going from here then? <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, I do, I do love the film. Um, Surpri- surprisingly, for something that makes you feel good, Steve, there's a surprising lack of the rock films here. Uh, well, actually, fine enough. Um, speaking of feel-good films and The Rock, I watched uh, Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle uh, last night, and, mm-hmm. um, and 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 I think that's a great film. Actually, I think it's a, it, I, I really enjoyed it. Again, and I was preparing myself because next week I should have um, the next level, the, the sequel. Um, that's which, a which is that's which a good is excellent. The, the next yeah. level is brilliant. It's really, really yeah, good. 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 Yeah. good. Good. I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, no, that, that's that's a good feel good film because I mean yeah, it has a nice kind of upbeat ending, doesn't it? With um, with Alex, well, the whole idea of Alex, you know, getting yeah. out in '96 and growing up again. So that's uh, yeah, that, that 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 was a good film. Uh, and The Rock, I think The Rock proves in that film that he's he's actually a pretty good actor. I oh, know he's, he's made, playing made somebody. Progress. You know, he's playing a kid in his body, and he does it really well. Um, well, the the so. take that to even even <laughs> bigger extremes in the second one and there's a whole sequence where I was poorless in the cinema watching it it's yeah really really well really well oh, done. I'm looking forward to that <laughs> well there you go yeah. slightly so, offbeat just as one last one I, if, if we're allowed slightly darker humour but I, I kind of makes me feel good um, as we mentioned Terry Gilliam uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas mm. I, I, I don't know why it just it, it's it's kind of it's that ride of a film, you know. That just yeah, I I always enjoy that. 
you know, come, you mean the perceived? It's one of those things where the perceived length of time in the film is longer than the actual amount of time watching it. I mean, Apocalypse Now, it sounds ridiculous because it is a long film. But when they finally arrive at the end of the river, it feels like much more time than two hours has elapsed. Mm. It, it, you have been with them for days. Yeah. And I think uh, Fear and Loathing, for different chemical reasons, manages to achieve the same. Well, I was going to say, I, I watched that film, I think it was a couple of times, but the last time I saw it, and I mean the last time I saw it, was in the cinema field at Glastonbury, whilst perhaps not entirely there myself, and that made for a slightly unusual experience. So I've, I've struggled to see it again since. <laughs> we can't stay long. This is bad country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm relieved that um, on the occasions I've done CES with you gentlemen, we've you know had work to do and stuff like that, so I can't just disappear down a sort of chemical wasteland. I mean, obviously, uh, who knows? Uh, CES 2021 uh, if it happens well, why not just send me send me out one of those little 4k cameras and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you my own self destruction start taking bets on whether the Euros are going to happen I'm uh, no, oh, no I think they're, they're going to get moved not so much <laughs> we're, uh, and the Olymp- yeah we're, we're, we're down down a year of of of, 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 of major milestones I, uh, and I think the sooner we re-gear to that idea yeah, just deal and with it, what we on. can and deal with it and and because there are still a, human achievements that we can celebrate in this time it's not all about getting together in a stadium Ireland has just closed pubs yeah, I mean I, I have long since sort of worked on the principle that Godzilla could be levelling Dublin and you'd still be still able to get a boozer I was going to say is, is it isn't that in the book of Re- Revelations? Or yes, something? <laughs> absolutely. I, I'm, I regrettably, I don't think we're too far behind, which is why I have my two emergency bottles of Jameson's. Well, uh, I mean that's two days sorted anyway. So, um, so on that Guinness bombshell, uh, that's it for this week. That's enough time we are going to spend on the podcast. Um, if you've got your feel-good movies that you want to uh, tell us about, um, then do so in the thread underneath the video on YouTube or the podcast forum on AV Forums. Um, let us know what you're doing if you're uh, going to be stuck, self-isolating. What is it that you're doing home cinema-wise or movie-wise or whatever? You know, What are your go-tos um, when you have time to burn? Let us know and uh, we'll come back next week and, and discover what you do. And also, I meant to mention um, the gentleman that we uh, discussed last week um, DTS man uh, yeah. his his initial is T oh wow there oh, you right. go that is fantastic so. uh, I mean obviously next week in the absence of actual product or film we'll be discussing how to make a, a serviceable meal from things you can buy at a petrol station <laughs> <laughs> or we'll something like that how long after I've died will my, wait, my cat wait before she starts eating me <laughs> oh god 10 20 minutes I think she'll start before I'm dead <laughs> Yeah. Well, you see, I, I started my diet this week, so pff, I'm going to lose one way or the other. So there you go. In fairness, you, you did pick a good time to go light on carbs, <laughs> given that there aren't actually any carbs to buy at the moment. So, you know. Got my yeah. three bentos pies, they'll last me to <laughs> well, end of time, I think. <laughs> they were probably made and manufactured in the 70s, Steve. I am going to have a look at the sell by date because they were covered in a significant layer of dust. I'm not joking. They really had, no one had ever touched them. This the only thing it. found in the forbidden zone is great pentos pies. <laughs> this now, is now how did, it ends. did you the buy band. them? Did you buy them and put them in the cupboard, or is this something that you've discovered in the cupboard? No, no, I bought I bought them on Saturday. Ah, oh, right. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So I was going to get some tins of chili. I thought you know, just a quick and easy meal. Some you know, if you get stuck with some rice. No problem, no. Um, but they'd largely been bought out. But I thought, oh, what are these? Oh, very <laughs> well, I'll tell you what: you're in for um, a delicacy, a, a it, delicacy, an experience. <laughs> and if you find any actual meat, let us know. I <laughs> like a fray bentos pie. I don't see why anyone else thinks the pastry should be dry. <laughs> I could, I could never get the pastry to rise. That was the problem. No, yeah, you, know, I, I you drink the, the pastry uh, through a straw. That's the photo <laughs> on the front, I think, is overselling what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, especially if you've got the steak and kidney. Good luck. There's no steak and there's definitely no kidney. Well, it, there is, just not from a cow. Not from a cow. <laughs> <laughs> the other animal you could identify easily. 
<laughs> anyway, we're supposed to be finishing. Um, yes. That's it for this week. My thanks to Ed Selly. Uh, in that respect, please turn off all pages and cell phones. Mark Butright. I love chicken McNuggets. And Steve Withers. That's not stupidity or weakness. That's just human nature. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, bookmarkavforums.com for latest reviews, news and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on iTunes, but only if you enjoyed the show. Also, head over and check out our YouTube channel for videos on the latest product launches and reviews. And while you're there, feel free to subscribe. And of course, you're going to do all of that because there's not a lot else to do while you're stuck in the house. I'm Phil Hinton. Thanks very much for listening. And we'll see you again, hopefully, next week. (laughs) 